Hey there, it's Robin Nolan, and I've got a question from Gypsy Jazz Club member Brad Majors, who was asking how he can use enclosures, which is this really cool technique which Django Reinhardt and lots of the jazz greats use in their solos, and how he could use enclosures on minor swing, the big famous Gypsy Jazz jam tune. So I made two videos for Brad, one video explaining how enclosures work over different chord types, and the second video, I recorded an example solo of using enclosures in Gypsy Jazz. So I'm really glad to say it's helped Brad and he's getting better and better every day inside the Gypsy Jazz Club. Um, if you would like to join the club, get help from me and support from an incredible community, plus five live events every month, weekly Zoom calls, guest teachers, um, then definitely take your 14 day free trial at Gypsy Jazz Club. Dot com. We would love to welcome you. Okay, for now, let's get into some enclosures on minor swing. Hey Brad, so let me just explain some basic enclosure ideas that you can use on minor swing. So on the chords A minor, on the chord D minor, and then the other chord in minor swing, E7. So if you just take the chord here, all right, A minor, okay? Then the first step is just to visually just see one fret below each of these notes, which would be, so the notes are A, C, E, A, right? So if we go one fret below each of those notes, you got, right? G sharp to the A, B to the C, D sharp to the E, G sharp to the A, right? So just go one fret below, and then you've got this sound. Right, so that's the first step in understanding enclosures, okay? That's the that's the bit below the note, okay? You can do all sorts of things. The other step is the, is the is the note above the note. So you've got one fret below each note, and then you've got one scale tone above the note. So there's the B. So the first enclosure, you're enclosing this note, right? You're wrapping that note with a note above and a note below, is this. Okay, there's the note. You've got the one above, scale tone above, and then you've got the one fret below, right? semitone below, then that's your first thing, phrase. When you move to the next note in the triad, you've got the C, so you've got the one note below, you've got the scale tone above, right, so now we've got, we carry on to the E, That's the scale tone above the E. And then there's the semitone one fret below the E. And then you're up to the A again. So it's kind of better to memorize this pattern rather than think scale tone above, semitone below. You know, just memorize this phrase. When it goes to D minor, we use the same principle, right? So then we'll start on the D, let's say. We're going to do the same thing. Right, there's the semitone below each note in the triad. And here's the one above. D minor covered. When you get to the E7, uh, you're going to take the notes in the triad, right? Which uh, you could build it here, right? Basically, whichever note of the triad you do a semitone below and a semitone above. So let's say we start on the B, 
so it's a slightly different rule than on the minor chords and on the major chords. Um, so in the solo that you'll see below that I've improvised on your backing track, I've basically thought about those enclosures, right, for the A minor, for the D minor, and the E7. And of course, I've not only just gone... <laughs> just did it like that um the thing is just to get a bit of get a bit of freedom and improvise with those ideas but it gives you a really good flavor and sound so uh enjoy the video thanks for the backing track it's a really great step to do that brad and i look forward to hearing you improvise over minor swing talk soon okay great so now i think you can see how enclosures work over the different chord types, over A minor, D minor, and E7 in minor swing. In the next bit of this video, you'll see an example solo from me using enclosures, and I'm playing the example solo over Brad's backing track. I always recommend that students create their own backing tracks, and it helps them with their rhythm and understanding of the song. So that's the next bit of the video. Don't forget, go to gypsyjazzclub.com to get your free trial to the club and get personal coaching from me, help from a community, and access to the best material on the internet for learning this music. Okay, here's the example solo. Okay, Brad, I'm going to record a lead track over your minor swing rhythm track, and I'm going to use some enclosures. So see if you can spot where I use the enclosures, and I'll make another separate bit video outlining the basic enclosures you can use on minor swing. Okay, so take it away, Brad. <laughs> enjoyed that enclosures on minor swing it's a really great technique to use 
Uh, and when you listen to Django Reiner and all the jazz greats, you will recognize this sound of enclosures. So hope the video helps. If you want to take your playing to the next level, learn quickly from the comfort of your own home. Don't forget, take your 14 day free trial at gypsyjazzclub.com and me and the community would sure love to welcome you. For now, stay inspired.